Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo Academy, the show where we teach you how to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So if you want to get that, make sure you stay until the end. Also, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, make sure that you jump into the description, click on the link there and download the sample files. Also, if you do not own Luminar Neo, make sure you use the link in the description together with the discount code so you can get the best deal on your new purchase. And finally, we would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to capture your own skies for Luminar Neo. Now, to have a right sky, you need three things. First of all, you need the correct location and the right framing. Second of all, you need to have your camera set up right. And finally, you need to do the right post-processing so you can get the most out of your image. So first, let's start by looking at the location and framing. Now, when it comes to location and framing, you're looking for a location where you can see as much sky as possible. You want a place where you can see clearly the horizon and then the entire depth of the sky. You're trying to avoid elements like trees, buildings, cars or anything like that. Now, looking at this example here, the framing is almost right. However, we're really trying to avoid any part of the ground of the buildings or of the trees in the image. So we simply adjust that by going up a little bit to something like this and that's about it. We can also use the ground to level up the sky to make sure that we level as much as possible and once we're ready we simply capture the sky. Now while we're here let's talk about the gear and the camera settings. You want to go for something like 24 millimeter lens to get as much of the sky as possible. However, you don't want to go too wide to something like 10 or 12 millimeters as you will start to introduce a fisheye effect to your skies. Now, when it comes to camera settings, you want to go for aperture mode, so you only need to choose your f-stop and the ISO and the camera will decide the shutter speed itself. Now, for the f-stop, I'd like to go to somewhere around 7.1 as most of the lenses are performing the best around this f-stop. On the ISO, you definitely want to go for 100 as you want to avoid adding any additional noise or artifacts to your images. Now, when it comes to the other settings, you want to go for single image drive mode, single image autofocus and wide focus zone. After that, the ISO we set up to 100, so that's already done. And finally, our white balance should be on auto as we definitely going to be shooting in RAW to get the most out of our image in post-processing. So there you have it. This is how you capture your skies. This is how you find the location, set up your gear and photograph it. And now we're going to jump into the studio where I'm going to show you how we post-process it, how we edit it and prepare it for the sky replacement in our Sky AI tool. And here we are in Luminar Neo where I have already three skies that I captured on that afternoon ready in the application. Plus I also have a two sample files we're going to be using in a little while. Now, if you want to follow me along and you want to use these skies, make sure that you head into the video description. There is a link that will bring you into our Dropbox account and you can download the skies from there. After that, you're more than welcome to use them, use them on your own projects and do whatever you like with them. Now, they are raw files, as I mentioned earlier, and we're going to start by editing them. So first of all, let's go ahead and use this sky. So we simply click on it and then we move into the edit module. Now, whenever we open RAW file in Luminar Neo, we get an additional option called Develop RAW. And as you guessed it, this is where we're going to start. We need to develop the image. So we're going to open it by clicking on the little arrow at the end of the tool. And we're going to start by going into the optics. So let's close the light, color, black and whites, and focus on the optics tab. So we open that and that's the very first step you should do when you edit your RAW files. You should switch on auto distortion corrections, auto fix chromatic aberration and auto defringe. This way we fix everything that was lens related and we don't have to come back to it later. Once we finish with it, we can close the optics tab 
and move to the first tab to the light. Now here in the exposure, I would like to make it a little bit brighter. I don't worry about smart contrast too much. I will just move to the highlights and shadows. Our highlights are representing the brightest parts of the image. We bring them down a little bit to somewhere around minus 50. And in the shadows, the darkest parts, we bring them also up to somewhere around maybe 30 or 40. Now we're keeping an eye on the image, seeing what we like to do. After that, we can close the light and we can move to the black and whites. Here in the black and whites, we can bring the whites up a little bit to make it a little bit brighter and whiter. And then the blacks, we can bring it down a little bit just to add a little bit of the contrast. Now what I'm doing at the same time, I'm keeping an eye on our histogram that is on the top of our panel. If you don't see it, simply right click in the middle of your image and choose show histogram. So what I'm looking at is to make sure that all the data are positioned somewhere in the middle of our histogram. I don't want to go crazily towards right or towards left. Once I'm done with the black and whites, we skip over the curves, color, Maybe in a color we can open it and we can add a little bit of vibrance just to make it a little bit more colorful. In a white balance, I don't want to do anything here as I quite like the result. You can always click on a drop down box and choose any of the presets, but I'm happy with how it came out. You can also adjust the temperature manually by using the temperature and tint sliders. Then I can close the color, move into the sharpness. In the sharpness, actually, I don't want to do anything. I'm quite happy with the sharpness. However, if you would want to, you could use the sharpness slider and then adjust the radius and masking. Now we close this and then the next step is noise reduction. Now for this, we need to zoom in to somewhere around 100%. Now you can do that by using your mouse or you can click on this little drop down box on the bottom of your screen and choose the 100%. Now you move around and generally the noise is hiding in the darker parts of the image. And even though we have shot it with 100 ISO, there is a little bit of noise here. So we can fix that by bringing up a little bit the luminosity slider. Somewhere around 20 should do and fix the problem. Maybe even a little bit more. Maybe 30 will bring us a good result. 30 is too much. I'm starting to get a little bit of a softness in the sky. So we leave it around 20. Now we zoom out. Have a look at the result and I think it's pretty good. Now we can close the noise reduction. Optics we have done already, we don't need to worry about it. And with the transform as it's sky, we don't worry about it at all. Once we're done with all the develop raw adjustments, we can close the tab and that will bring it out, move it into our edit tab and change the tool into the usual develop tool. Now there is one more thing you should definitely do before moving forward. And that's jumping into your erase tool and using the remove dust spots option. If you can't see it, it's in this little tab called objects removal, and you can open it and close it by using this little arrow here. So definitely as a habit, always go ahead, jump into the erase tool, then into the objects removal and click on the remove dust spots, just to make sure that we are removing any of these little spots or unwanted elements. Once the tool is finished, it will give you the message dust spots removed. And that is a sign that you're done with this tool. You can simply close it and focus on other tools. Now, at this point, you could easily export the skies and start to use them in your sky AI tool. However, let me show you a few tools we could use to enhance the sky. First option, you could use the enhance AI tool. You can simply open it by clicking on the little arrow and you could try and see if the accent AI is going to add to it something or if maybe the sky enhancer slider maybe improve the sky a little bit. Now for me, I quite like it the way it is, so we're not going to use it. However, that's the first option. The next option is the structure AI. In the structure AI, you can bring the slider down a little bit and make the sky a little fluffier and a little bit more natural. That's quite a nice slider for this type of sky. So that would be structure AI. After that, you could jump into something like a landscape tool and you could add a little bit of golden hour feel to your sky. So you can make it a little bit warmer, which is quite nice alternative and a nice adjustment. When you want to keep it all nice and natural, you simply keep it on zero and move to the next tool. Next, we're moving into the creative section. In the creative section, you have multiple tools you could use as well. 
For me, for example, the mystical tool works quite nicely, again adding some nice glow and softness to your sky. So you can simply increase the amount and see what you like and prefer. The final tool I like to use is the glow. And inside of the glow, in a type, I like to switch it to glow and then just use the slider and see what I like the most. So for me, looking at all the options I give you, I think the glow gives a nice result to this image. So we adjust it a little bit to somewhere around, let's say 30 and we leave it. So once again, you can use the Enhance AI, Structure AI, Landscape, Mystical or Glow tool to enhance your sky even further. Now, once we finish with this, we can come back to our catalog module. And now by holding Ctrl or Command on your keyboard, we can select the other skies, one and two. Now we can right click on all three of them and in adjustments, select the sync adjustments. So this way we're going to take the adjustments we created on the first sky and we simply going to copy and paste them on the other skies. Now, while we have all three skies selected, we can right click on them and then choose export. Now, first we need to navigate to the folder where we want to export them. So for me, this works. And then we need to click on this little options button. Now we're going to set up the way the sky is going to be exported. Starting with the sharpen, you want to leave that on none. Resize, leave it on original. In a color space, go for the sRGB. In a format, we want the JPEG. And with the quality, we want to go all the way to 100% as we want a full scale and full size JPEG. Once you finish with it, you simply click on save and that will go ahead and save your files to the desired location. So now we have our skies exported and we can bring them into our sky AI tool so we can start to use them for the sky replacement. Now, how to do that? We're going to click on our sample image and then we move into the edit module. In edit module, we move directly into the sky AI tool and we open it just by clicking on its name. Right away, we jump into the sky selection option and open it again by clicking on it. In a gray drop down box, you want to make sure that you own the custom sky folder. And here you simply click on the plus sign and plus button. This will open a window and here you need to locate where you exported the files. This way you need to import them one by one. So simply select the first sky and click on open. As you can see, the first sky is already imported and applied. So let's repeat the process. We click on the drop down box, click on the plus sign and simply select the sky number two. Again, we click on open. Again, the sky was imported and applied to the image. So the same thing one more time, drop down box, plus sign and the sky number three. Then we click on open and we wait a moment for it to get imported into the tool. Now we have a full tutorial for the Sky AI tool and the link should be in the top right corner of your screen right now. So if you want to learn more about how to adjust it, you should go ahead and check it out. However, still while we're here, let's do a few adjustments. We can jump into the scene relighting and adjust the relight strength. And we can also push the relight saturation. After that, we can close this tab and open the sky adjustments. And in the sky adjustments, I would add a little bit of warmth to the sky and maybe bring up the brightness a little bit. After that, we can close it and leave it the way it is. Now, as you can see, we are back in our catalog module and we're going to try our new skies on another image. For this, we're going to use this lady in a red dress and an Eiffel Tower. So we select it and then move into the edit module. From here again, directly into our sky AI. And we're going to start by selecting the new sky. So we click on the sky selection drop down box and let's see what's going to work the best. Let's try the first one. Now that looks quite nice, but let's try another one. And finally, how about the third sky? Now I think the best was the first sky. So let's select it and let's adjust it. Now looking at the picture, the lady is all in focus and then everything behind is nice, soft and blurry. So we need to do the same for the sky. So for this, we're going to move into our sky adjustments and bring up the defocus slider. So it's quite strong, so you don't want to overdo it. However, I think maybe somewhere around 10 or maybe even more. How about 20? So I think that 20 is looking very good. 
So we can move to the warmth and add a little bit, again, very carefully. And then with the brightness, also make the sky a little bit brighter. Following this, I would close the tab, move to the scene relighting, adjust the relight strength, maybe also a little bit of relight saturation. And finally, we can use the relight human as we have the human on the picture and adjust it to what we like. Now, just before we're gonna finish, I wanted to give you a quick reminder about our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. If you wanna speed up the process and you wanna get incredible skies and start to use them immediately, you can check out the bundle by following the link in the description and you will get over 90 incredible skies. And as you can see, I have the skies on the screen here. We have some beautiful blue skies. We have a golden hour skies. We have a sunset skies pink skies, dramatic skies, night skies, all you can imagine is in this bundle and it's definitely worth checking out. So once again, in the description, follow the link there and get it while it's still on opening discount. And now it's time to get your gift. If you want to get access to our Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, all you need to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminargift. And there you can download the cheat sheet and start to use it right away. Hey! And there you have it. So I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share our video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.